In the sleepy town of Circleville, Ohio, a sinister secret was about to break the tranquility. In 1976, residents began receiving anonymous letters filled with accusations and threats that would tear the community apart. What started as seemingly harmless gossip quickly spiraled into a terrifying campaign of anonymous terror. The peaceful town of Circleville, Ohio, lived a slow and predictable life. But in the late 1970s, a series of mysterious letters would shake the community to its core, uncovering dark secrets and leaving a trail of fear and suspicion. Initially, the scandal revolved around an alleged extramarital affair between school superintendent Gordon Massey and school bus driver Mary Gillespie, both of whom were married. The letter sent to Mary urged her to end the affair. Mary was married to her high school sweetheart, Ronald Gillespie, and they had two children. However, the situation escalated when the letters alone were not enough. The anonymous letter writer began making phone calls, and ominous signs started appearing along Mary's bus route. In response, Ron Gillespie reportedly made multiple trips to remove and dispose of these signs. As fear spread through Circleville, law enforcement launched an extensive investigation, tapping phones, watching people and their houses, businesses whilst working alongside the United States Postal Services, trying to identify the elusive letter writer. Most of the letters that were sent in the mail were postmarked as coming from Columbus, Ohio. The letters accused people of heinous crimes ranging from affairs, embezzlement, right up to murder. But despite their efforts, the identity of the letter writer remained elusive. The police interviewed countless suspects, analyzed handwriting, and even brought in experts. But the letters kept coming, and the mystery only deepened. In August 1977, Mary embarked on a road trip to Florida with her sister-in-law, leaving her husband and children behind. Just prior to her departure, Ron, her husband, revealed that he knew the identity of the letter writer and would address the matter while they were away. Tragically, during their journey, Mary and her sister-in-law received news that Ron had crashed his pickup truck into a tree and succumbed to his injuries. The authorities concluded the accident investigation, ruling it as a result of intoxication and officially closing the case, despite several other pieces of evidence present at the scene of the crash. Ron's brother-in-law, Paul Freshour, and several others have argued that he was murdered. They based this on the fact that Ron was not a heavy drinker and that a 22 caliber revolver was found in his pickup truck. Further analysis revealed that the revolver had been fired once, but no further investigation was conducted by the sheriff's office due to the toxicology report from the coroner. If anyone was shot, who shot Ron or who did he shoot at? Despite previously denying any involvement in an affair, Mary openly began a relationship with Gordon Massey after Ron's passing. The letter writer noticed this shift and the letters attacking Mary became increasingly hostile. In one such letter, the writer commented, It's your daughter's turn to pay for what you have done. On the afternoon of February 7, 1983, Mary was driving her school bus to pick up children. Suddenly, she spotted an obscene handmade sign on a fence bearing her daughter's name. Startled, Mary slammed on the brakes and brought the bus to a halt. She jumped out of the bus and rushed over to the signpost to rip it down. However, as she reached for the sign, she noticed a string attached to it that led into a mysterious box. She decided to take the box and the sign home, but when she opened the box at home, she got a shocking surprise. In it was a gun aimed at the signpost, loaded and ready to shoot anyone attempting to pull on the sign. Upon realizing she had narrowly escaped a booby trap sign, she promptly proceeded to the sheriff's office with the item in hand. After examining the gun, the Ohio Bureau of Criminal Investigation, BCI, discovered a startling piece of evidence. They were able to restore and extract the full serial number from a partially filed away serial number, and it belonged to Paul Freshour, Ron's brother-in-law. In a conversation with Paul's wife, investigators learned that the couple was in the process of getting a divorce, which prompted her to provide the police with extensive information about Paul. She explained to the police how Paul greatly admired Mary and Ron, Ron's passing made him very angry, leading him to hate Mary. Additionally, she disclosed that she had found some letters hidden in their house and that Paul was responsible for writing the Circleville letters. The prosecution believed that Fresh Hour had a motive to silence Mary, but the defense asserted his innocence. However, Paul had supporters who contended that he was used as a scapegoat due to the lack of evidence linking him to the letters. 
Freshour claimed that the gun had been stolen from his house, and he could not explain to the police how it ended up in the box. During the police investigation, Freshour fully cooperated by allowing searches and even providing the police with a writing sample for analysis and comparison to the letters. Despite maintaining his innocence, he failed a polygraph test and was subsequently arrested for the attempted murder of Mary Gillespie. Despite not facing charges directly related to the letters, Paul Freshour received a 7 to 25 year prison sentence for the attempted murder of Mary Gillespie. This ruling generated controversy, as many individuals believed the circumstantial evidence against him was insufficient for a conviction. The town of Circleville celebrated, believing they had apprehended the perpetrator and brought an end to the letter writing incidents. Contrary to their initial belief, the mysterious letters did not stop. Remarkably, even during Paul Freshour's solitary confinement, when every item addressed to or sent by him was thoroughly inspected, hundreds of letters continued to arrive. Serving 10 years of his sentence, Paul Freshour was granted parole in 1993 and promptly contacted the FBI, seeking their investigation into the puzzling letter case. The Circleville letters remained a persistent enigma until their abrupt end in 1994, leaving an enduring mystery that has fascinated and perplexed many. Today, the Circleville letters remain one of the most baffling unsolved mysteries in American history. Did Paul Freshour orchestrate it all? Or was he wrongfully convicted? Who was truly behind the letters? And why did they finally stop? The legacy of the Circleville letters serves as a reminder that even in the most idyllic communities, darkness can lurk beneath the surface. Perhaps the answers lie not in grand solutions, but in the haunting echoes of the unknown. For the truth, curiosity never rests. As elusive as it may be is the very lifeblood of the mystery. Until next time, remember the shadows whisper. The wind carries forgotten tales. The veil between the known and the unknown is always tantalizingly thin. Stay curious, stay skeptical, most importantly, never stop questioning. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and comment below.